So today I have the honor to talk to Dave Palumbo from RX Muscle. I'm a big fan of your channel on YouTube. Um, I watch Ask Dave, uh, the whole Iron Debate, everything. I watch it regularly. I'm seeing that your content is growing, your viewership and everything. So um, I asked the community of myself on YouTube if they have any questions. But first I want to ask you a question for myself. Um, you have RX Muscle, the platform. I want to ask you, you tried a lot of times, you tried to get the IFBB Pro card back then, I think from 95 to 04 or something. And do you think you would have invent RX Muscle if you had got that Pro card, let's say in 03 or 04 or something? Or do you think that nowadays you would be at a complete uh, different standpoint at your career? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I really enjoyed um, yeah. Giving information out, I enjoyed, you know, helping people get ready for competitions. I enjoyed, you know, uh, talking with people. So I, I think that had I gotten a pro card, I don't think it would have affected my ability to yeah. become a, a journalist. I guess you could say yes. moving forward because I was already writing for magazines when I was competing. So yes. had I got the pro card, yeah, I might have tried. To, I might have competed a little longer, but I don't think that it would have necessarily negated the fact that I would want to start my own media website to report on the sport and to give my opinions on things. So probably not, but it might have delayed it. And you know, if, whenever you delay things, sometimes you don't have the same opportunities that yes. are presented to you. So I, I yes. believe that everything happens the way it should, you know. Yeah, everything happens for a reason probably. Yes, you're yeah. right. Um, I searched up on you on the internet and what I saw was um, there are several pictures with yourself and Nasser al Sambati. I don't know if you had a personal relationship or anything. What I read on the internet was, you know, the late interviews with NASA where he got a lot uh, bitter and everything. Um, can you describe NASA? Was he always like that or was he actually positive back then? Um, Nasser also somebody was like a prankster and he was, um, he was a, I guess he was a phony, you could say, because, you know, he, he I thought I was good friends with him, but obviously yeah, he's talking a lot too. behind my back and he does that with a lot of people, you know, he just, yeah, he, he thinks he Nasser thought he was a little better than everyone else. Like he's the kind of guy that would be your best friend, and then I would go to the bathroom, you know, and 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 the girl I was hanging out with at the time, he was you know, when 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 he when I was away, he was like trying to give him you know yeah. give her his phone number and and his, and his hotel room card. So yeah, you know that that was Nasser, and you had to just accept him for who he was. He really didn't have any real friends that I knew of, at least. I everyone agree. was okay. just like acquaintances. That he kind of would hang out with in, in in a social setting. So if I saw Nasser in, in Hawaii, I, I, we, yeah. I was in Hawaii covering the show. Nasser and I spent almost every day together. You know, we ate all our meals together. We, we we went to the gym together. But in Nasser's mind, I was still uh, you know some somewhat of the opposition. I don't know why, but everyone was in opposition to him. So that's why I was kind of surprised when he came out and he and he said some negative things about me. But. Uh, he, yeah, he gave compliments, but he also, you know, made up some stories and stuff like that. And I was like, well, you know, that's Nasser, you know. And once again, I don't, I don't take things personally. So to right. me, it, it didn't bother me. It was, it was more disappointing than anything yeah, yeah. else, you know. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that. Um, so my third question is a little bit. I don't know if you would want to answer that. Um, there is a disease in the internet called acromegaly. Did you heard of it? Mm -hmm. Uh, mistakenly, sure. mistakenly, a lot of people in the internet, especially on YouTube, they make a lot of videos and everything. They call it palumboism. They gave mm. your name to the disease. What's your opinion on that? Are you pissed off when you read uh, those kind of videos or see these videos, or, or what do you think about that on palumboism? Well, well, acromegaly isn't is not an internet disease. It's actually a no, disease, no, it's a of, disease of an excessive amount of growth yes. hormone output, you yes, know, yes. by because of a pituitary tumor in people's heads. Yeah. And they develop, you know, because these people crank out so much growth hormone, they start to develop like, you know, weird big hands and big feet and and big yes. noses and 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 yeah. you know, like very caveman-like features. You know, think of Andre the Giant. He was he was a typical acromegaly the type of looking person. Um, you know, yeah. for whatever reason, you know, as my career went got moved on and on, and I had a lot of shoulder issues and a lot of a, a lot of you know joint issues of which I'm going to be you know addressing recently because I'm going to actually I need a few two shoulder replacements. Um, okay. You know, my physique changed, of course, a little bit, and, and that's and when I retired, I, it kind of still looked really good. It wasn't what I would have liked it to be, um, but that's really the case for most bodybuilders, I think. So if you want to call the aging process. 
you know, acromeglia, or if you want to name it, Palumboism. Because, you know, let's yeah. face it, people don't name something after you unless you've made some sort of an impression on them, positive or negative, over True. the course of, you know, a career. And, and obviously, I was one of the biggest guys at one point. Uh, I was probably one of the most controversial guys, too, yeah. because I was, you know, always I was always saying what was on my mind. I was educating people to the truth of drug use and, and whatever. You know, people, I had a lot of fans. I still have legions of fans. I have, I have legions of, of haters, too. It's amazing. But but you, you get both. And, I mean, this this comes along with any celebrity type of, of situation. So, you know, I guess yeah. people felt that, you know, my physique changed as it got older, which it probably did a little bit. And they felt, but you know, I had huge legs when I competed. So I don't know, you know, people saying that small legs, you know, small arms. I didn't have small arms. I didn't have small legs until until recently. You know, when I stopped, you know, taking yeah. drugs and and, and trying to downsize. So uh, they named this like I guess look, which is really not an acromegaly look. It's more of a aging look okay. after me. And and okay. if, if, if that's what I'm going to be known for, then then whatever. I guess I guess I did something right, right? Because yeah, Harry Houdini always said. It doesn't matter what they say about you as long as they spell your name right. So That's it is what it is. I don't, I don't believe that there, that bodybuilders can physically take enough growth hormone to cause acromegaly okay. to occur. Acromegaly is accumulated over 30, 40 years of, G, of, of constant GH output by the pituitary 24-7 a day. Yeah. You, you couldn't, you'd be broke. You couldn't take enough growth hormone to cause that. But I do think that the aging process yeah. will change the way your body looks. Okay, thanks for your answer. Um, I think so too. I read about it a little bit on the internet, but people talk about it without knowing anything, so nah. no, no wonder. So, yes. So third question, um, I think, I'm not sure, but I think you wanted to do in the past uh, a video with Louis Marco, but it never happened. So how's your re relationship with Louis? Does he like it or do you have a relationship? I don't know. Do you have anything or what's your opinion on him? I, I don't have a relationship with him because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't respond to us when we reach out to him. Because I figured, look, here's a guy who sits in his basement and does, re you know, does reporting, you know, yeah. makes his gives his own opinions with his weird accent, and and people seem to like it, and he has a lot of followers, and he has a lot of people watching his videos, um, but he doesn't really, you know, he doesn't really have, you know, here's a he's like a, he's a, a typical YouTube sensation, really. I mean. He has no authenticity to give his advice, but it doesn't matter because he has a, a viewership. So I think, you know what? It's kind of fascinating that this guy that, that really has done nothing in our sport and is not known for anything and doesn't go to any shows would have such yeah. a crazy following. I want to get him on the show and get some of his opinions and maybe ask him some questions. And he was uh, reluctant to come on saying that he was not in, in, in bodybuilding shape. He, he, he was off season. Yeah. That was his original thing. So yeah, I, didn't I started like... I don't wouldn't say poke in front of him because I'm I'm kind of envious in a way that he has so many followers. Yeah. I started just poking Louis Marco fun and then he and he got insulted and he and he blocked us from Instagram <laughs> and, and, and whatever, from Facebook or whatever, because he was insulted, you know, by what we said. Meanwhile, who is he to be insulted? He's no one in our industry. You know, the fact that I'm talking about him and validating him <laughs> should be, you know, he should be patting me on the back and shaking my hand and thanking me for it. So I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I, I think this is a. This guy's got a huge ego, probably from all yes. the fact that he has a, a big viewership, and he obviously works very hard at putting out these videos every day. Yeah, so um, I understand, you know, what he's doing. I, I don't think he's slacking by any means, but I don't know what why he's uh, so sensitive. No one, no one gets made fun of it and and said more things said about them in this industry than me. If anyone should be upset with other people, it's me. Yeah, but true. I don't let anything bother me. He's got the most viewers. What is he letting anything bother him? He should be laughing his way all the way to the bank to his. To his little uh, commission checks he's getting every month. True. Okay. Good opinion on him. Um, probably you heard it. I'm pretty sure. Um, Dennis Wolf is injured for a long time now. Um, he was at the FIBA. I don't don't know if you see him there, but um, there is a lot of speculation going on if he can ever come back after this neck injury. Do you think that he has any chance to be at least as good as he was, or even better, maybe this year or next year? Or do you think his career is over basically? As a competitor, I saw I saw Dennis at the FIBO, and I asked him if he would like to interview with us, and he um, yeah. he, he declined. So I don't know if he declined because for some reason he's mad at me, because <laughs> that's possible. Everyone's always mad at me, right? Or because he's just not ready to talk about you know his comeback. I think that's more likely than when it was because I've interviewed Dennis plenty of times in the past. I think he's just he's not where he needs to be yet. I think the injury was a lot more severe than he let on, or maybe even well, knew about. And I think that, you know, he's still recovering from it. And I think he can't train the way he needs to. He hasn't put the size back on. Yeah. And will he ever? I don't know. He might not even know. 
Probably. I'm sure the doctors told him, look, yeah. go by how you feel. If you feel good, push it. If you don't feel good, then don't push it because you don't want to wind up back under the operating table like Ronnie Coleman did. So True. neck injuries, spinal injuries are, 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 you know, are very, very difficult to overcome. You can't force the process. You can't make it go faster than it's going to go. He might have some, you know, some, you know, neuropathies or some, some, you know, lack of feeling in certain areas that need to still come back. I don't know the severity. I, I wanted to interview him about that, but maybe he obviously is not ready to talk about it. So I don't know if that means that it's worse than it, it, it's being portrayed as being, or if it's just a matter of when he's ready, he'll come back and talk to everyone, you know? Yeah, I think so too. I think he's not ready. Uh, he did an interview for Team Under the German platform. He said in other two, three months, um, he can go on planning anything. So we will see what will happen. I hope everything will go fine. Um, what I wanted to ask you also is um, Flex Wheeler is doing a comeback this year. I looked up on his body and his body looks pretty good. But what is sticking to the eyes of the fans is his arms. Do you think he has any scintle left or something there? Because a lot of people <laughs> are saying, okay, having these, these arms, um, he doesn't have a chance to do it because they are a little bit out proportionate or everything. Or do you think that Flex Wheeler can do a good comeback? Something. I, I think that Flex just has really big arms, and I think what happened yeah. was when he lost the size in the rest of his body, his arms are just genetically gifted. The reason I oh. say this is because if you watch him, if he when you see him flex his arms, yes, they have definition and, and separation. So yeah. I don't think he's got any synthol in there because he wouldn't have all that separation. I just think he has genetically big arms. He lost yeah. a lot of size in his shoulders and his forearms. And they just look weird now. But I think once, if he can get the size back in the forearms and to get the size back on his delts, I think he'll be more in proportion. But if you look at his, for even when he competed, his arms were always way bigger than everything else. So That's true. it doesn't surprise me that they're still bigger than everything else. Now, whether he can put enough size on uh, to, to look uh to beat some of these other classic physique guys, that's still debatable. We don't know what he's going to look like, obviously. But um, he's obviously uh, serious about the comeback. He's training hard. He's dieting hard. His waistline is still super tight. So yeah. who knows? So, you know, I, I love a good comeback. You know, it's a great story. You know, hopefully he can come back successfully and uh, you know and, and make an impression, even if he doesn't win. You know, if not, I guess at least he could say he tried. Okay. Yeah. Um, I watched your interview with Milo Sarsev yesterday, I think, or yesterday, today, yeah. and he actually said that he thinks that Kevin Leroni can win a show this year, a pro show. Um, are you with the same opinion with uh, as Milo Sarsev, or, or do you think that uh, Kevin probably will have difficulties winning a pro show? He said he thinks that Kevin can win a pro show if he can bring his legs up. Oh, so that's okay. a big if. Yeah, you know. yeah, uh, I, I would say the same thing. If Kevin can bring his legs yeah, up, if, if, if the injury's gone and his legs respond and they get big, absolutely. I was predicting Kevin to win the Olympia last it. year. So he certainly can win a pro show if he brings his legs up. Um, whether that'll happen or not, we don't know. He's not really showing them off. But I did see them in sweatpants at FIBO, and they look a lot bigger to me. So I have to assume that, that he's better than he was. It's also another. He's going to have another year under his belt of training, so he'll, he'll yeah, have sure. to be much better than he was at the Olympia. How much better he needs to be to win this Vancouver Pro Show? Yeah. Who knows? You know, it's certainly a good show for him to do because it's not going to be a huge, crazy stack lineup um, like That's the true. Olympia was. Yeah. But you know, it, we'll only know what he looks like once he takes his clothes off. Yeah, true. I think he's at least realistic enough to say um, he's not competing at the Olympia this year. So yeah. it will be interesting. Um, you made a lot. Um, a couple of videos with uh, the highly speculated and talked Boston Lloyd, which I saw. And there is a video of Boston Lloyd um, ejecting steroids on YouTube. I don't know if it's still up. Do you think that uh, with the internet technology we have nowadays, um, it's actually good for the people to see such things and get uh, a certain advice or see, you know, the no bullshit mentality? Or do you think that for newbies, it's maybe you know not good to see everything from the beginning on? You know, it, it's it's a hard question to answer because I, I I'm in one in one hand I'm I'm a big believer in, in open knowledge and yeah. freedom of speech and and being able to do whatever you want to do. On the other hand, you know, um, some people do things that are a little irresponsible in terms of dosages and how much and the fact they're doing it in a parking lot, you know. 
So yeah, yeah. I think Boston Lloyd's, I think his his mind is in the right place, being yeah. radically honest, telling people the way it is. But I think he's just not thinking, hey, you know, I'm I'm a role model now. I'm an educator. I can't do irresponsible things because people will copy what I'm going to do. That's you know, true. when I give advice, I'm always aware of the fact that I'm giving it to not just one person, but I'm giving it to the entire world, you know, on, on YouTube. So you got to you got to take responsibility for that because if someone get does something stupid and gets hurt if that's on your conscience you know so you know, he's got to be a little i think that maybe as he gets a little older he'll become a little bit more conscious of that and uh, i think he's good for the sport in the sense that he brings excitement and he's he's not afraid to give his opinions but i think he's also still a little reckless because he's younger yeah um like we all know ronnie coleman and lee haney have the uh, title of the olympia eight times and phil heath is on his way to maybe even break the record. I think he wants to win it 10 times. Do you think with the lineup we have these days at the Olympia, there is a high chance of, of uh, winning that 10 Sando or even eight, nine Sando and breaking the title? Or do you think that the lineup will be better and better and guys like Cedric McMillan maybe will take it? Or maybe Kai Green will come back, we don't know it. So what's your view on that? Well. Phil's looked pretty good the last year uh, or two, and um, you know he killed it this past year. No, no one's beating him. It's the same lineup of guys. If, there, if anything, there's less guys in there, and, and these guys haven't beat him Set. before. Yeah. The only guy who's improving really and who's more who's dangerous is Big Ronnie. Uh, you know he's been he switches trainers every three months, so yeah, yeah. he doesn't so. have that consistency there. So. Yeah. I think Phil's got the advantage on these guys because a lot true. of them are older. They can't beat him. They haven't beat him yet. They're not going to beat him unless he comes in off. And the young guys, uh, of, of the young guys, there's only a couple, maybe Dallas McCarver and, and Big Rami who are young guys, you know, yeah. Justin Compton. And I don't think they're close to him. I think Big Rami is the, 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 best, the best hope to beat Phil Heath. And, you know, I just don't know if he has the mindset to be Mr. Olympia because he just can't – he's not bringing it and he's not – you know, he's not keeping a consistent team yeah. in his corner. He's constantly changing things up. So I don't know. I I, I like the idea of Rami winning the Olympia. Um, can he do it? I, I hope. I'm kind of cheering for him in a sense. But uh, Phil is still the man to beat. And you know what? If if Rami doesn't bring it this year, again, I I think Phil's going to just walk through this 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 Olympia, and I think that he'll probably win another couple too because there's just no one in the foreseeable future who's going to beat this guy. Um. Do you think that Kai Green will compete again? There were a lot of pictures uh, these past day on Instagram having like 320 pounds or at least he's saying that he's 320 pounds in a pretty good shape. Um, he didn't compete at the Arnolds this year. So a lot of people are actually speculating um, will he compete at the Olympia this year. I think that he also has to qualify. So do you think the sh chances are there for him to compete or do you think that he doesn't give a fuck? Yeah, I, I I think that that Kai probably wanted to look good for the Pittsburgh guest posing that he's doing this this weekend, okay. and that's probably why he's looking pretty jacked um, and, yeah. and pretty lean. Uh, I bet he dieted for it. I bet you that's his Olympia for this year. He wants to just make an impression. Hey, I'm still around. I still got a great physique. I may be busy and I might not be able to do the, these shows, but but I'm around. I don't think Kai will ever do the Olympia unless okay. some a sit down is had and 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 they iron out the piece between him and you know the, the AMI but I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to happen I don't think AMI cares if he does the Olympia the, the Olympia always goes on they, they always have a great show they always sell a ton of tickets so the, the, the Olympia people don't want uh, any one body to, to feel that they're more important than the Olympia itself and I don't, that's why I think Kai will never I don't think there'll ever be the piece between the two of them so I don't think we'll see Kai on an Olympia stage. Will we see him back on an Arnold Classic stage? More than likely, because I think Kai Green likes to compete. He has some opportunities to do some acting and some some creative projects that he really likes now. From what I, you know, him and I spoke about in uh, when we were in Italy at the end of last year. Um, so I think he's going to really explore that this year. I don't think we'll see him on stage, but I think you know you might see him at the beginning of next year at the Arnold Classic. That's a, a possibility. Yeah. Um, talking about the Arnold Classic, I just checked the Arnold Classic this weekend. South Africa, I checked the lineup. There are, I think, 12 guys competing there. And what I found interesting is not only did the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio, uh, had a worse roster than the couple past years, but also, you know, the other Arnold Classics, the, roast, the roster is getting worse and worse. Do you think maybe they should cut back on that other Arnold Classics and 
only focus or more focus on that main Arnold Classic or do you think that they should just increase the price money to make the other Arnolds more in interesting or what's your view on that? I, well, I think that, you know, these new Arnold Classics, especially South Africa and, um, um, whatchamacallit, um, Australia. Brazil. Okay. Yeah, Brazil. I, I mean... Uh, uh, China, excuse me, I meant to say, the, the one in Asia. I think they're new. So I think you're going to, and it's very far away from the United States. So I think you're going to have trouble initially getting a good draw there. And I think yeah. they want to build up the expos <clears throat> and start making some money because once they make money, they can increase the prize money. So, That's true. Uh, yeah, I think if to get guys to fly to, to Asia or to fly to South Africa, you're going to have to give a big purse away. Um, yeah. But it's a great way to qualify for the Olympia. It's a great they, the Arnold people pay your expenses. It's a great way to go That's true. vacation or visit you know a faraway area. So if I was a bodybuilder, I I try to get into those lineups because you know what they, right now they're weak and it's and it, and you can actually wind up placing top five and you don't have to be that great of a bodybuilder. Just show up in shape. You know it seems yeah. like for Lucas Hospital to win Brazil, I mean no one would have thought that this was a 212 guy a couple years ago. Now he's winning open shows and not only just open shows but all, open Arnold classics. So. Uh, I think that uh, it's a mistake for some of these guys to be skipping these shows, but I think that the, the show caliber will increase and increase as the year goes along and as the prize money oh, goes yeah. up. I think it's their new shows now. If you notice, our, Australia and, and USA are, are, are packed. Um, yeah. Even Brazil has got a decent lineup. I think that, you know, once again, once the athletes see that, hey, this is a special show, I'm treated well here, once the Arnold people establish themselves in these new areas and start making money, I think that the caliber of the the competitor will go up. Okay, so you do you think also that next year and the couple following years that the Arnold Classic lineup will get better because this year it was not that interesting. Dexter Jackson didn't compete and a lot of other guys didn't compete. Do you think that this year was like okay, not that good, but next year it will come back again? Well, I I, I thought it was stellar the fact that this the Dallas McCarver. Cedric McMillan battle alone was was worth the price of admission, and the speech that Cedric gave after his win was worth yeah, was. the price of admission. So to me, it was super exciting because we, you know, it was very close between those two guys, and uh, and they made it very exciting. So I, I, I have to disagree with that. I, I don't okay. think the line, maybe the, the, the entire I, lineup was not strong, yeah. but the top guys were really good. Yeah, and true. you know that's just the way any show goes. The Arnold Classic from year to year is always variable. Sometimes it's crazy, sometimes it's not. Okay. It, it, it yeah. depends on the ebb and so flow too. of the bodybuilders and who's competing, you know. Yeah, I think so too. I think because the Kuwait guys like Ruli, they had so many contests last year. I think they just took the time off. But I think it will be packed again the following years. And what I always see in the internet and YouTube comments is people are always comparing the new guys today with the 90s guys. And without seeing the performances back then live, At the contest they're always saying basically that the conditioning back then in the 90s was much better harder and everything i'm just i'm not talking about the mess just the conditioning and overall um you probably saw the 90s live and you probably saw this era life so do you agree that back then in the 90s the conditioning was better but or do you think that that's just a speculation or a myth No, I, I think that people just remember. I think the bodybuilders were better in the '90s, and I think that's I just because so. we had we had a golden era there when we had the Flex Wheelers and Kevin Lavronis and Dorian Yates and Ronnie Coleman's that's and true. Nash Russell. It was just yeah. it was just it was like a it was a heyday, you know. It, was, it is what it is. But they didn't always come and rip to the bone. Flex Wheeler was not always in shape. That's true. You know, Nasser wasn't always in the best shape. So I don't yeah. think the conditioning is any better was any better then than it is today. I think the physiques might have been a little more. Ta there might have been a better talent pool then because. Yeah. It just happened to be a good era, you know. Look, it could happen again, you know. It, it, you don't know. Look at the new the new guys coming up now are really good. The Dallas McCarvers and the Big Ramis and the Justin Comptons. And these guys are, you know, are really, really improving. And, and we're seeing new guys at all, all the time now popping up, not only in bodybuilding, but in the classic bodybuilding division. And those guys would eventually probably move to bodybuilding. So I don't agree with the conditioning aspect. I just think that yeah. it was a good time period for talent. And we could see that again, so uh, that I wouldn't discount that. Okay. Um, nowadays, uh, back then, what I saw is that the mecca of bodybuilding was in Gold's Gym in East California. But nowadays, people more and more talk about Kuwait and Oxygen. You have your Camel Crew shirt, I saw. 
And yeah, yeah. do you think that uh, Oxygen Gym and Kuwait can be an interesting place for professional bodybuilding in the future? Because I think maybe Bada Day wants to do something like that, but I don't know it. Do you think um, there is? I a think that he, but, but Beta Badai is trying to make uh, Oxygen and Kuwait like like a little bodybuilding factory almost. Like like yeah. they, he's trying to make it like the like Gold Gym Venice was back in the seventies and eighties and nineties. He wants to make it a place where bodybuilder friendly bodybuilders can go. They can train. They have their own trainers. They they we provide you with food. They provide you with uh, drugs, supplements, whatever you need. You know, it's like a body. It's almost like Disneyland for a bodybuilder. And he feels that if he creates this environment where it's conducive to, to building physiques that, that will get better bodybuilders coming out of there. And, of course, he's going to get credit for that. But that's fine. I mean, yeah, you true. know, I mean, Gold Gym Venice got, got credit for a lot of bodybuilding physiques back then, you know, because of, of the same thing. Ed Connors was bringing guys out there all the time. So, you know, nowadays, you know, because of the stigma of anabolic steroids, yeah. it's better to go to a country where, where they're legal so that you don't have to you know, won't be breaking the law. You don't have to worry about using fake gear. And yeah. you can do what you need to do over there. And I, and I understand why the guys go there. And it's it's a great environment. And Bader really supports the athletes over there. That's true. He supports them to the point where, you know, everyone is being catered to like VIPs, like 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 they're basketball stars or baseball stars or football stars. And you know what? Bodybuilders train just as hard. Professional bodybuilders train just as hard as the other professional athletes. So I think it's a great thing he's doing over there. Yeah, he's doing a great thing. Um, do you think that the main difference... There is, or you know, there are guys like Brandon Curry. When Brandon Curry got up in the pro ranks, at the beginning he was very, very hyped. Then he was at BSN and everything. Then he's uh, nobody talked about him a couple years, and now he got to Kuwait, and he has a certain something like a comeback. Um, do you think that the main difference in Kuwait is what a lot of people are speculating? Of course, is are steroids or a lot of people are saying IGF-1 or anything they have there because they, they don't want to believe that it's the training and the nutrition. Do you think that uh, the thing that makes these guys bigger there is because mainly because of steroids? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with the steroids. I think that, that it's the training and it's the eating and it's the focus. And I think Brandon is the first guy, if you watched my interview with him that I did on rxmuscle.com, mm -hmm. He even said it. He goes, I, you know, I got kids. Yeah, I got this. Lazy, I got, I I, you know, there's, yeah. there's too many distractions where I live. And when I went yeah. there, it, it, I have like, you know, everything at my beck and eat. And all I have to worry about is training and eating. And that's a great thing to do. Now, look, Brandon Curry was better, but he wasn't. He wasn't like a hundred percent better. He was. That's true. Fifteen, twenty percent better. So, um, will he will he break the top six at the Olympia? Maybe not. Yeah. You know. Okay. So. We don't know. I mean, he is better, and, and a lot of the guys who've gone there have gotten better, but some guys have gone there and not gotten better because they That's already true. were working hard, and they were already doing everything necessary in their powers to be the best that they could be. So for some people, it will benefit them. Some people, it won't. And, uh, you know, we'll just have to find out. You'll have to see. You know, there's no special drugs or secret stuff they're doing there. I mean, anyone who believes that is, is, is just – it's a pipe dream. It's like you know, they're making up fantasies because they want to explain off why people are getting good results you know no one wants it i don't know why it nowadays people just don't want to work hard i mean when i trained every day i went to that gym was a freaking battle with that gym i had to try to lift more weight push more reps you know push my body into a position and, and to exercise that, that, that it wasn't comfortable doing because i wanted to improve nowadays people just want to go through the motions and and, and take selfies in the bathroom there so you know unfortunately that that that's i think the reason that's why we're true, not seeing the results that we should be seeing yeah i think especially with the technology and social media and everything people have so many distractions even when they are working out so they don't have a real focus and yeah. that's maybe the the negative effects of technology and everything okay so um you you asked um you answered all my questions that was basically it um i don't know if you have to uh, if you want to say anything else um, sure. Okay. I just want to tell everyone out there who's who's listening. I, I don't know where this is going to be broadcast. Mostly, it'll be obviously on YouTube. I don't know what your main audience is, but yeah, you know, YouTube. it doesn't matter because the bottom line is that we're all all of us that lift weights and try to build muscle are in the same iron brotherhood. We are all trying to achieve the same thing. We all want knowledge. We all want you know to know how to do things the right way. We want to know how to build our bodies the best and burn fat. Do we like enjoying watching the sport and seeing other people who are successful at it? Sure, but in Ultimately, it's a selfish endeavor. Anyone out there who's watching, 
You're doing it because you want to know how to build muscle and you want to know how to look your best and burn fat and be healthy. And that's that's why I'm out there, you know, and I understand this because I, I went through the same thing when I was younger. That's why I'm out there trying to educate people and do shows like this to educate people. That's why all the RX Muscle programming on an RX Muscle YouTube channel on the RxMuscle.com website is all geared towards entertainment and to education. So if you guys like that, you might want to subscribe to our channel. Um, also, my species nutrition um, line of nutritional products are also geared around the same thing, helping you to achieve what you're trying to set yourself out to do, which is build muscle and burn fat. And uh, all the accessory vitamins and minerals and essential fats and fibers that, that are required to do that are in the line. So everything that I do is geared toward the same thing, educating people, providing services, providing products that can help people achieve their goals. And uh, once again, I enjoy doing what I'm doing or I wouldn't do it. And hopefully that yeah. passion comes out in these interviews that I do for I people. So. And I don't do a lot of them with yeah. other sites. But, you know, I, you asked me and, and I promised you I would do Thank it. You, and yeah. hopefully your your audience will enjoy this and, and more people will see this, you know, than ever before. And uh, hopefully people have a better understanding of who I am after after watching this interview. Yeah, I'm pretty sure thinking that people really will enjoy this interview and will like it because it was a you answered all the question I had you answered it openly so I think it will have a great response so thanks again and sure. I hope you will hit 100,000 subscribers this year thank, thank you. you that's where our goal is thank yeah. you so bye Dave wish you all the best